Hi, I'm Julie Pollard. In today's acrylic demonstration, we'll be painting a woodland creek scene exploring the versatility of acrylic. We're going to combine the transparency of watercolor with the opacity and richness of acrylic used similarly to oil. We're going to begin with a semi-monochromatic underpainting to establish the dark value pattern similar to a grisaille. And we'll use a palette of colors to create harmony, unity, and ease of color and value mixing. I'm using just one red, one yellow, and one blue. No need to get complicated in a study because we want to keep it very loose. This is just for information. The information we're putting into our, into our brains for this, which is going to really help us later on when we get into the real painting. I'm sticking with wide flats, wide flat brushes during this stage so I don't get too picky. And we want that um, color to flow, not only physically to move, but visually. So I'm making sure that I combine these colors and shapes right down into the water. So this is also the first stage of the reflections. So the color that is in the object to be reflected comes straight down into the water. going to go back and forth at will until I get it to look kind of like I want it. Taking great liberties with color. That's one of the things that's so much fun about painting. So as long as I use values that will create the shapes that I'm trying to create, I can use pretty much any color scheme I really want to. Add some of that glazing medium to the water. And then paint into it. So it's kind of um, like painting wet into wet. So with our wet palette, uh, we know how to keep the paint on the palette workable for longer periods of time, but we can still have problems keeping it workable on the canvas for a longer period of time. So adding a little bit of that glazing medium to the canvas, then painting into it can help you do that.
When you paint with an opaque medium, I suggest that you try different ways of holding your brush. You may have noticed while I'm doing this demo that um, a lot of times I'll flip the brush and hold it like this. Gives you a lighter touch. Because you really can't press as hard when you're holding it like this as you can when you're holding it the way we normally feel like we need to hold the brush. So I don't want to really scrub, so I'll switch back. <coughs> so I really want this glow of light coming through that foliage. So I'm really going to put on that light value color pretty strongly. kind of adding to that light value pattern that got established with the frisket. I'm going to mess that up a little bit to push that back. So what I want to do is darken this area up and I'm referring to my photograph which is it's got a very warm dark uh, right in here where we can see through the water to the that's a little bit too red let's get that a little more yellow where we can see through the water And now that we've got that uh, foliage more or less finished up at the top, now we have a better idea of what uh, the reflection should look like. So as I work on the reflections, I'm continuing that horizontal and vertical type of brushwork. work. 